Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome to Umran Webinar 2020. First of all, today I am Sazaru Izzat bin Saadun, uh, undergraduate Bachelor of Landscape Architecture from IIUM, International Islamic University of Malaysia, would like to present under sub-topic number one, sub sub team number one, that is public space and placemaking, with the topic of a study of current landscape legislation in Peninsula Malaysia. My study is supervised by Assistant Prof. Dr. L.A.R. Putri Haryati Binti Ibrahim. First of all, to start with, I will give a brief definition of legislation. What is legislation? Legislation is a law which has been promulgated by a legislature or other governing body or the process of making it. In a simpler word, legislation is a law or set of law that has been suggested and made by the officials. There are a few more terms besides of the legislation such as act, law, policies and guidelines. This, this term has very in their characteristic. As I listed, the act and law are mandatory, hard and fast rule and no exemption, but policies and guidelines are advisory, optional and no action can be taken if any party or anybody does not go along with it. Okay, next. The next is the problem statement. The main problem here is there is no specific act or law for the landscape expert in order to recognize the importance of the landscape profession. This, this act is very important and crucial for the landscape profession so that they can be competitive in the industry. This specific landscape act also is very critical in effort to eliminate the conflict between environmental designers. There are several issues that comes along with the problem. The first issue is current landscape legislation is considered unconventional. The second one, the factors need to be considered in the new proposed landscape act is too many. And the third one, there are many difficulties that landscape experts and professionals have to face due to this topic matter. And next, I would like to talk about the National Landscape Policy. The National Landscape Policy with the, the tagline of transforming Malaysia into the beautiful garden nation by 2020. The NLP, that is National Landscape Policy, is the most famous policy that landscape architecture professionals or expert that work that was introduced to steer the national landscape development and it comprises the strategic policies and action plan. The NLP also aims to create a conducive, balanced living environment that will be able to encourage socio-economic growth as well as the creation of an ethical and cultured society. The aim the main aim of the NLP, National Landscape Policy, is becoming the beautiful garden nation by 2020. The NLP also expected to boost the country towards a total living environment, total quality living environment. The National Landscape Policy also uh, aims at creating a holistic, a quality, unique identity and sustainable landscape in Malaysia. But the, the policy itself is not enough. As stated in the NLP SWOT analysis, page 8, the most significant weakness of the landscape architecture profession nowadays are divided into two. The first one, inadequate landscape legislation and enforcement. And the second one, the absence of uniform coordination between federal and state administration in the implementation and enforcement of landscape development. Next, I will like talk about the Town and Country Planning Act 1976 that is called Act 172. This act aims to provide comprehensive control and guideline for the town and country planning in local authority Malaysia. This only applicable in Peninsula Malaysia as the Sabah and Sarawak have their own ordinance and policy of planning. 
all new planning or country uh, or town and country planning need to be obey what is in the act 172 this act is currently is the parent act of the landscape architecture as the environmental planning and the public and the open space design is also bound to it the focus of act 172 is uh, is the identification of main areas that to be developed and also redevelopment and upgrading the existing area this act 172 is also have the applied framework and procedure to make the system consistent and there are also some requirement for local authority to produce a development plan this uh, involve four stages of preparation that include the publicity in the connection and also consider public participation and now i would like to ask everyone to sit back and enjoy my short video coming up. Welcome to your piece of paradise, your slice of calm in the city, your Eden kingdom. Welcome to the Schlitterbahn. All over Germany, on the outskirts of town with a long railway line, you'll find garden colonies. Lots of land that are divvied up and rented out to green things at Hobby Garden. Schubert Garden, Klein Garden, Dacia, there are several names for the allotment of Germany. The classic garden is an average 370 square meters of manicured lawns, complete flower beds, and a shed. Decoration is welcome, including, of course, the king of German things, the garden net. Did everyone enjoy the video? That was a video of a garden Germany colony. And now let's go back to the presentation. The aim of the study is to collect, compare, and analyze all the current legislation method or jurisdiction scope that related to the landscape architecture profession. This involves not only Act 172 and the NLP. There are several many more acts and law or guidelines that are related to this issue. Okay, the main three objectives that related to this, this aim is the first one, to analyze and compare the local landscape legislation method with the international method. The second one, to study the effect and impact of current landscape legislation method to the environmental designers. And lastly, to propose a new landscape parent act in order to eliminate the conflict of jurisdiction between the experts. And now, I would like to talk about the research method the research method divided into three. The first one is content analysis. The second one is questionnaire survey. And the third one is interview. And for the finding and analysis, there are several elements that needs to be considered in helping the establishment of the new Landscape Act in Peninsula Malaysia. In other words, many of the respondents agree that needs, the needs of the Act of Landscape Architecture profession is very crucial. There are also agree that current acts, law, guidelines, policies, and regulation that related to this landscape architecture profession needs to be needs to be looked again and revised. This will lead to the creation of a more robust and strategic working system that respect or respect the interests of landscape practitioners, addresses conflict and challenges. Nowadays, nature's has become the central features of construction program. Aside from being all green field, they are also now considered as a significant environmental dimension. Based on this end, many developers see a landscape as an opportunity for their marketing tactic for new residential scheme and selling point. Last but not least, for conclusion, it simply can be concluded that a profession that, that does not have their own acts, especially design-based career, will face many problems in the future. The study also hopes to support the landscape specialist as a more broad authority has been developed and also improve the landscape career community in Malaysia. That's all from me. Thank you.